Hey everybody, Steve Grace here. We're going to talk about a kind of a smorgasbord of different things today. I'm going to take you on a little scouting trip I made. I'm uh, going to tell you a little bit about shot placement. There's been a lot of controversy lately on Facebook about shot placement. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And at the end, if you watch the end, you'll see me shoot something with a judo point. You've never seen anybody shoot with a judo point in your life, I promise you. But anyway, I want to jump right in and talk about shot placement. Right, I'm going to talk shot angles and several different angles and uh, show you what I think is best. I'm going to talk mainly about the quarter and two, two shot. I'm going to talk all angles, but anyway, I'm going to start with a quarter and two shot. And uh, because that's the one that's kind of been controversial. I've been seeing a lot of people taking this quarter two shot uh, and uh, on some really big deer and not having good results with trad. And that's a... Uh, that's something we all used to know, but right lately, you got a lot of people like the hunting public, they're coming on and taking these quarter and two shots with these compounds. They're set up for that. They got heavy arrows. They got little bitty, tiny two blade broad heads and uh, they're taking that shot and making it and they can do it and you can do it with that setup. But the deal is if something does go bad, maybe they miss the mark a little bit and gut shoot the deer with that little tiny Broadhead, I mean, they're the hunting public. They're really popular. If they call in a dog, anybody will drop what they're doing and love to be on that show and track for them. And I'm gonna tell you something about this dog and all these dog apps and all that coming on. And they're great. They're outstanding. <clears throat> but if you gut shoot a deer, there's a good chance that about 999 more people have shot a deer that day and maybe hit it bad, maybe missed it. Everybody's calling in them those, those dogs. So, uh, you know, my personal experience, you need a dog, everybody else has shot deer that day. There's a lot of tracking calls. Them guys can only answer so many. If you're counting on being able to call in a dog, that is not 100%. A lot of times they may be a day or two getting there well you've lost your meat by then you've lost your deer to coyotes you love you you gotta really make the basis of your shot placement and your shot execution based on tracking that deer and recovering it yourself that's the best case scenario uh if you don't have a dog yourself now this this frontal shot here and everybody says oh this is an awesome shot and it is if you were to hit right in here and if you look at the bone structure, if you really study bone structure, this leg bone, it joints right here, it comes up and it joints way up here and it comes back in the shoulder blade. So if you hit right in here in this little pocket right here, you're gonna be good. You're gonna probably heart shot the deer. You're probably gonna cut his windpipe, his aorta, all that good stuff and you're gonna be fine. But if you're aiming right here and this deer squats a little bit and they're always a deer a deer facing you at this angle if you're shooting at the distance where he's got time to squat and let me back up if you're shooting at a distance where he don't have time to squat look how small this this joints right here so you're going to have to be up in this area to be able to make that shot of course his head's in the way right now if you're real close in the tree you couldn't make this shot without shooting him in the face so say he's got his head down then you've got to be way up in this area right here to make this shot and then you're running the risk of because the shoulder comes up you having to aim even further in this direction so it, it's just a terrible shot and if you were on the ground you could come down low in this pocket and uh you'd have a little more room and uh or the nine train has to come through when i do this video it's quiet to laugh. but anyway it's just a poor shot. Now let's say you're shooting at this deer from from off the ground, uh, about 20 yards, 18 yards. They got plenty of time to squat. If you watch Chris Spike's videos, he murders deer. He hits deer just absolutely almost perfect every time. He's shooting them six to eight, nine yards. That's how far he shoots them. When he shoots them further than that, he don't shoot them further than that because obviously they have time to squat. He don't get as good of results. So that's anybody that's had a lot of good success with trad, especially shooting these southern jumpy deer. We're killing them at sub 10 yards, 14 yards or less for sure. 
But if you're shooting this deer from say 18 yards with a trad bow, he's gonna have plenty of time to drop and, and wheel. And what happens, they always, you know, drop and they kind of shove back a little bit and you start wheeling. So this shot that will hit right here perfect, it all of a sudden now is hitting him in the shoulder blade. And a lot of times he's fading away when it's hitting. He's fading away, plus you hit that hard bone, you're not gonna get any penetration. So, in short, it's just a bad shot to take with trad. That's all it is to it. And uh, I'm gonna wheel this deer around, and let's say, uh, you know, we obviously know the broadside and a quarter and away shot at close distance. We obviously know that that is, that is a great, you know, great shot to make. So we're not gonna talk a lot about that, but we're gonna talk about that shot at 15 to 20 yards, 25, where the deer really has time to squat. And, uh, and, and you know you're shooting at a nervous deer, you know he's gonna squat. You really gotta direct your arrow somewhere below him because they squat so much. They'll throw them front legs out and they'll go down. I've seen them bump the brisket on the ground. They just go down that far. The hind end for pretty much stays up, but the front end drops. And I watched a lot of video on this lately. And a lot of times when it drops, it pushes back a little bit. So even if you are aiming low, right in here, right below the heart, and he squats a little bit, you're good. But if he does that severe squat and he pushes back, the shot that's directed right here, this will end up there. It'll end up hitting in the shoulder blade more. And uh, from what I've seen, the best place to hit here when they squat and push back is to aim back further right here. Well, that's very difficult to want to do because if he just squats a little bit, you're going to hit him in here behind the heart. That's a terrible shot. So what I've really come to the conclusion of, if you're going to shoot a deer at longer distances, uh, say 15 to 20 to 25 with a trad bow, then you need to let that deer get cornered away. That gives you more, more chance of making a good hit. And you need to pull back like if you're going, you know, if he's going to squat, you're going to have to aim a little low, but the back end don't move so much. The front end's what's going down. So even if you just aim just a little bit low between the legs and you know the deer's going to squat hard, you'll end up up in here. Cause like I said, he goes down, he pushes back and he wheels. So this just gives you a better opportunity to make a good shot on a on a deer that's going to squat because the quarter and way shot in my in my estimation gives you a wider range i mean you can hit way back here it'll be a gut slash liver slash one long shot and when you get all of that that deer's not going to go far lay down and die if he's squats down you're aiming right here and he squats down and pushes back or wheels you're going to end up right in here well that's perfect you're going to lung him and, and heart shot him another thing i you know mike mentioned is the bigger the broad head the better in these situations if you're shooting for right here at a deer that's going to squat and you hit right up in here and you're going to hit uh, guts and one lung guts liver and one lung the bigger the broadhead, the bigger the hole, the better off you are. Uh, I'd rec I would recommend shooting a uh, VPA, the big 200 grain, well, I think it's a 300 grain VPA. That's an inch and a half. It's a three blade. That's a good head. The big Simmons that they make, that's a good head. I like the Simmons. I like to add the bleeders. Everybody knows that. That's that's probably, in my estimation, the best case scenario for making a humongous hole, getting penetration and everything. So uh, that's all I wanted to talk about on shot placement. And uh, my battery's about to run out. I got to cut it a little bit short, but uh, stay tuned for some scouting tips and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, something that you've never seen shot with a judo point. <laughs> There's a reason I leave.
my bow fishing stuff when I come up through here to go scout. Or every time I bring it, I don't get any further than this. And uh, lo and behold, today, there's a tank of a gar coming up to the top right there. Unbelievable. Check to get a close. There's several gar and grassies coming up out there. I wouldn't have made it past here. I would have stayed here and bow fished. They're having dumb fish day. I literally stepped on that one's back. All right, all right, I'm on a little scouting trip, you know, looking for deer and hogs, and mainly I'm looking for places that they'll be later on. And uh, I hunted right in here last year and saw a big wad of hogs. So I come in here to see if these swamp chestnuts were dropping. You know, that behind me is a big swamp chestnut. And uh, what I'm really looking for this time of year, a lot of times you won't find acorns. And uh, you look for, you know, because it's not dropping whole acorns yet, a lot of times you won't find whole acorns, but you'll find stuff that the squirrels are cutting. And sometimes you'll find caps. And you have to learn to identify the new cap, which this is a new cap, compared to the old caps. The old caps are going to be darker and uh, more you can tell they've, you know, been weathered, but that's a new caps, real smooth on the inside. It dropped an acorn in the, so I didn't really have to find acorns. I could just find the caps because the tree's probably only dropping one or two uh, acorns a day and the deer and the hogs are keeping up. But I did happen to find a couple good acorns here. And uh, this is probably to be really hot. And here's another fresh cap. It's a real fresh looking cap right there. So the tree's obviously dropping just a few acorns. It's not uh, probably dropping three or four a day. And uh, it's not real smoking hot yet. I'm kind of anticipating that this will be hot uh, probably about two, maybe three weeks from now. And uh, I'll drop back in here on a, on a good day when I, when I don't mind. It's probably going to be mostly hogs in here, but I'm really going to look a little further in. This is real wide open woods right here, more more open than I'm accustomed to hunting. And uh, I'm going to go in a little deeper and find some thicker woods and uh, try to find some trees that are dropping uh, near those thicker woods where the deer most likely will come from. That's what I'm going to do. Been scouting through these woods in a I started seeing a lot of hog sign. They're rooting all in here where these hickory nuts are, these old hickory nuts. And I, I don't know what they're eating, but I just spotted a, looks like a sow up there and she's working her way across. I'm thinking to try to get a little bit closer and maybe get a shot at her. And she went up behind this blowdown. And I don't know where she went from there. She may be still out there rooting around. I'm a, stalk in a little bit closer. I thought she was going to come my way there one time. I'm back in here where I got real close to killing the six point last year. He came from that way and he was going straight toward my tree. I was up that tree right there on the other side of that sycamore. You know, he just nailed me. I didn't realize I was right on the trail. So I think if I hunt this again, I'll hunt over here make it about a 14 yard shot to this trail you know be a lot better off i won't get down in here it's tight on them <clears throat> i always try to get off the side of the trail and not be right in line with the trail it's something about them when they're coming right towards you they have a tendency to see you a lot more than when they're going by you so i'll probably get up there about that limb right there you know mm -hmm. I think I can kill him from there if he's still alive. I found a little old deer down there that had been shot. Somebody just shot him and left him and got his head. So that might have been him because he was he was pretty pretty easy to see. I saw him well, I saw him about three different times. I saw him twice that morning. And uh, but anyway, this is kind of where the hogs come through. There's a there's a rub right there where they rub 
It's a good trail right here. Good place to kill something. I'll be back here. Well, I guess I had to do it. I had to shoot one with my judo point. <laughs> and he's got my arrow. I gotta go out there and get him. He's, he's about had it. Swimming all around with my arrow in him. Made a perfect shot with a judo point. <laughs> How many folks say they killed a fish with a judo point? I was just lucky it was shallow up in here. I could recover it. Didn't have anywhere to hide it when I turned died. I hit him right in, right in the other side, right behind the gill. But uh, anyway, that's the reason I don't bring my bow fishing stuff up in here. I'd spend my whole day bow fishing, especially when, they, when they're out good. Every time I come up here to hunt them, they're not out this good, but they're out today.